Hello everyone, I am Scribelite, and Porco has graciously offered me an opportunity to help maintain his ad revenue while he's on vacation. Oh, and also to plug my own work as well, I suppose. And so, in the spirit of Porco's penchant for taking on ideologies, let's begin with an offering from a little channel called Islamic Pulse, whom I have checked in on from time to time. I think you'll agree, their content is mind-blowing. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Have you been feeling sad, little blue, little down in the dumps? Actually, I um, I kind of have. Um, thanks for noticing. <laughs> well, good. You should be. Huh? Why would you say such a thing, you, you meanie head? In the time of Ghaybat of the 12th Imam, the believers will be tearful. In fact, Imam al Ridha has said, The most pious of believing men and women are those who are sorrowful for the time of flowing water. Imam al Mahdi. Sorrowful for the time of flowing water. Do you mean like the great flood or something? He is the one who will fill the world with goodness. He is the one who will quench that thirst, that sorrow, in the hearts of those who believe. Whoa, wait a sec. The person who is sad, depressed, and sorrowful will quench the sorrow in the hearts that believe? The sad guy will make other people less sad? Is that like when a clown cries? I, I don't get it. If you're feeling depressed and sad and dejected, don't worry. Don't worry? But worry is what being sad, depressed, and dejected is all about. If I'm not supposed to worry, but I'm depressed... Oh, God, this is giving me a headache. In a world this bad, you'd have to be sick in the head not to be sad. But you just told me not to worry! Now I'm sick in the head if... If I'm not sad, I... You're not abnormal. In fact, you may well be one of the Shia of Imam al-Zaman and the best of people. In the Holy Quran it says, Say, have you considered if your water should go down, who is it then that will bring you flowing water? My water, it flows down and I can't take it. According to Imam al-Sadiq, the flowing water in this verse means al-Mahdi. You're not sad, you're thirsty for the time of flowing waters. Okay, back to something semi-serious here. I had to look up what al-Mahdi meant, and it roughly means one who is guided by God. So the sad people are, or could be, according to our friend here, the specially chosen to be guided by God. Now, admittedly, I am no Islamic scholar, so if this is the wrong interpretation, I am happy to be corrected. But our friend at Islamic Pulse is no help whatsoever. But remember, one is never to confuse that internal true sadness with external sadness. Never confuse internal true sadness with external sadness. Okay, what, what does that even mean? In Aqayyad, we learn that the thing which breeds depression for a human is chemical imbalances, deep-seated trauma, uh, mental illness, is distancing oneself from one's purpose. One's purpose. Right. Of course. You mean worshipping Allah, don't you? And what's our purpose? What is your entire purpose in life? To make YouTube videos and masturbate in between projects. What? Why are you looking at me like that? The Holy Quran says, And I have not created the jinn and the men except that they should serve me. That's it. <laughs> That's it. But to serve Allah does not only mean to pray to Allah and supplicate to Him. That's a part of it, albeit a very important part. 
Oh, do tell us what is involved in supplicating to Allah outside of quiet prayer and meditation. I am certain that nothing you are about to describe is contradictory to what a large swath of Muslims actually practice at all. Serving Allah means to be generous with your soul, to be good and kind to the creations of Allah. Does being good and kind to the creations of Allah extend to gay people? How about apostates? Women? How about Jews? How about nine-year-old child brides? To have taqwa, God consciousness, to love and to be loved, to struggle in the way of Allah. These are the things that make a human truly happy and tranquil from within because your purpose in life is being fulfilled. So my purpose is to have God consciousness, whatever that is, to love and be loved, though I can't exactly make anyone love me, but okay, and to struggle in the way of Allah. What is the way of Allah exactly? And why do I have to struggle? What if I don't want to? If that's my purpose, but I don't want to do any of it, is it Allah's fault? or Allah's will that I am defiant? And how would you know the answer to that question if I were to ask it? Cheerfulness is very important in the religion of Islam. The Holy Prophet said, cheerfulness is one of the signs of the believer. Wait a second. Cheerfulness is the sign of the believer? But didn't you just say a minute ago, the most pious of believing men and women are those who are sorrowful for the time of flowing water. Yeah, I thought that's what you said. So if you're sad, or if you're happy, then you are likely a good believer? You're really stretching this umbrella as far and as wide as you can, aren't you? Is there any mood that isn't holy? He also said, meet your brother with a cheerful face. But you say to somebody, Assalamu alaikum, brother. And he says, <laughs> What the fuck is that? Is, is that a gooey duck? Looks kind of like a gooey duck. Or a pork chop? No, <laughs> it can't be a pork chop. I say, brother, you're being stingy. Stingy? Stingy. Because you're not giving your brothers and sisters what they deserve. Imam Ali says, Your cheerfulness shows the generosity of your soul. The generosity of my soul. What does that mean exactly? You might be giving that charity from your wallet, and you might even be feeding people from your own dinner table. But if you ain't being cheerful, then you're being stingy with your soul. Uh, so if I am as charitable as a saint, but I'm not smiling all the way through it because I am depressed or sad, which makes me a genuine believer, I am being stingy with my soul, which makes me a bad person. I was only partially joking before with the head explodey thing. This level of contradiction is truly inciting a migraine. Allah wants your soul. I'll swallow your soul. Come get some. To come alive. But people think that being cheerful means doing things like singing and dancing and haram stuff. Tell me where the freaks at. I want a party. That's haram. This is haram. Everything's haram. What's there left to do? I say, brother, you're being stingy. Stingy? Stingy. Loosen up a little. You're advising me to loosen up when you just laid out that singing and dancing and fun things are not allowed. Can you not see by your own script how contradictory and convoluted your ideology is? Don't you care? Or maybe you honestly cannot see it, as indoctrinated as you might be. The divine laws and the deen have not come down to restrict you. They've come to set you free. So am I free to dance, to sing, to do haram stuff? And if not, how is that not being restricted? Because people are dying to know the answer to that one. Imagine a plane. In fact, don't imagine a plane. Here's a plane. Oh, man. Will I be baited into making the obvious gallows humor reference here? No, no, I don't, I don't need to. He can't have chosen this particular metaphor by accident, though.
For it to fly, it needs a runway which is without bumps with straight borders to guide it so that it can truly soar in the skies. Without variation, without deviation, everyone on the same path in rigid cadence. Deviation from the path is deadly. Do not stray, only conform. Conform. Imagine the pilot sitting inside said, Why is the road so straight? It's restricting me. I'm really not sure which is worse. How stupid this metaphor is, or the childish way it's being sold to the viewer. ¿Por qué no las dos? Such a person who thinks that cheerfulness and merrymaking is singing, dancing, and drinking is gonna end up one depressed person. So if you think fun things are fun, which falls outside of the restrictions presented you, and thus you define fun as fun but aren't allowed to have fun, you're going to be depressed, which will make you a true believer because your sorrow will tend to quench the sorrow in the hearts of those that believe. Makes perfect sense. You want to be free? Imam Ali said cheerfulness is the trait of the free. The cheerfulness of the believer is on his face. His strength is in his religion, and his sorrow lies in his heart. What the fuck does that mean? I, I, go, oh, holy Cthulhu, your gibbering insanity is far more merciful than this nonsense. Please devour me. You gotta bury that sorrow deep inside and let people feel the love. I want you to smile today. But I don't feel like smiling. Well, it doesn't matter how you feel inside, you know? It's what shows up on the surface that counts. That's what my mother taught me. Take all your bad feelings and push them down, all the way down, past your knees until you're almost walking on them. So be generous with your soul. Be merry, be giving, have trust in Allah, and remember him often to guard yourself against depression. Yes, don't seek any medical or therapeutic help for rampant depression. Just put a smile on your face. Think of Allah, and remember not to do any fun things lest you burn in hell for all eternity. How awesome is that? And remember, verily in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest. Yea, verily, and thus I too shall rest. Thanks again to Porco for letting me inhabit his channel for a spell, and as always, thank you for watching.